other subject also crucial. Yeah. No, not only English. People thinking I am only reading English subject and I become. <laughs> yeah. Should learn to write English in science. I don't blame students. You don't blame teachers. I don't blame students. Who is to be blamed then? Almost 90% children in Nepal like a teacher for being handsome or beautiful, not for the teaching style or the methods, right? These teachers, they are being uh, trained by the hypocritical teachers and now they're training these new murgas to be as hypocritical as them. Hello, sir. I'm good. What about you? Okay. I want to ask you something. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Angry. Yeah. English so much? Uh, well, I don't know about it. You know, like, people do know Tonki, but then, you know, like, based on what is their need or requirement, right? So, I'm not sure about, you know, like, how shall we term other people's English no Tonki and, well, others might be judging our English no Tonki, so... <laughs> So that's just random. But no, problem no, our society. Indeed. English speaking is superior being like that. Oh my God, that's, uh, you know, a million dollar overstatement. <laughs> People think if you can communicate in English or if you can at least go with some sort of accent, Tom it has American accent and then say British accent and then the people are wow and then you say like if you are if your English is not so good and then people are saying oh like look 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 he's speaking like an Indian or a Nepalese yeah yeah, it's, yeah kind of thing that is <laughs> yeah that is you know in a way that we have been cultured we have been programmed psychologically to believe that the English is uh, was spoken in Britain or America or the English speaking nations is quite superior to, you know, other variants of English. So, you know, like we forcefully try our best to fit into that situation, that uh, paradigm, right? But then I think that is just creating some sort of chaos at the moment. People are not, you know, like on the track. They are just running after some wild speculation or assumptions and then nobody knows what is the perfect English. Some people, you know, outside Nepal, outside Britain or America say Nepal English good. Yeah. English good because everyone understands it. Right. Britain or Scotland, whatever. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and then main thing is to understanding communication. Yeah. So I think Nepal is it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, but then like people, you know, have determined some scale, you know, to you know just say what is actually good, right? So they are not happy with good. They want better, and then they want the best, right? And what is the central best thing that you want and it, they say it's British English or American English so no matter how well communicative are you you're still trying to replicate or imitate the pronunciation pattern or the accent of the Britishers or the Westerners themselves you know like it's just like that I think um, people's understanding will not change you know like you might have seen, you know, people migrating to these Western countries recently, the migration, and then they have got some um, English language testing systems like IELTS, TOEFL, or, you know, um, PTE, right? So, and then how do they judge your English? Like you say, no, I've got fine English, uh, I've got fine Nepali English, I can, you know, communicate well, but then... Like you mentioned, if you, if you don't, you know, just stay, it's water, then, then, if you just, I know my English is uh, Nepal English, I can just say water, but then you'll be, uh, devalued, your, your, your score will be compromised, right? Your score will suffer if you at least don't try to imitate them. 
So what these, you know, test takers, these pretty I'll stop all people, what do they want? They want to hear your know, English being as good as theirs, right? So that is kind of judgment. People are always keeping in the head, you know, like English has to be of that standard. Otherwise, you'll not be considered for uh, a an abroad study program, right? So um, you have to, in a way, mimic, right? Or try to be better. You to you try to sound like an American or British, and then you're really standard. Oh, they say, oh yeah, he's you know takeable. That sort of mentality has been again developed. So in a way, the colonization, the effect of colonization is still in the people's mind. And no matter you know how good your English is, being a non-native or non-native speaker, your English will always be judged. So they have created a judging parameter. Right. So I think that's why people are, you know, in a way, not easy with what they speak about. Well, TOEFL, IELTS, no. This sad, sad exam. I say sad exam because yeah. everyone reading English. True. <laughs> yeah. English, plus two also everything in this. Yes. Everything in this. And also taking English. <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's truly unfair. You know, in a way, our educational uh, degrees are not validated. And then, okay, the English that we speak is not, you know, thought to be up to the mark. And then they ask you to undertake some classes. They ask you to listen to the native speakers, you know, watch English series and the movies and then try to reach to their level. And then you're taking all. That's kind of, you know, you're right to point at the, you know, at the point that, you know, okay, our education system already guarantees English education. Our curriculum guarantees. But then, you know, okay, our curriculum might be, you know, top notch when it comes to the theoretical aspect. But then do we have the, you know, um, sufficient or, you know, adequate manpower, skilled manpower to handle the subjects such as English or non Nepalese languages, right? So our English is, as you mentioned, you know, like uh, just uh, used to type of just uh, a matter of, you know, day-to-day -day norms that we are we are speaking like the the teachers come to the class and then they communicate in the easiest possible way and then they're using uh, non-English languages to make their learners understand. For example, okay, you know, I've been observing some demonstration back to some of the institutions and some English teachers, they try to, you know, make the students understand that article or and the article based on Nepalese Phoneme systems or IEE, like if you have, you know, like if the words um, begin with the sound or IEE, -E, 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 then you use N. Otherwise, uh, that's how uh, that teacher oriented, you know, like the teacher demonstrated that way. And then I had a question for the same candidate. I asked her, okay, suppose you are teaching the students of non Nepalese background. Okay. They do not know. Like they are Chinese, they are Korean people, they are, you know. Yeah. Okay. So if you are trying to teach the same thing to the non Nepalese native speakers, how would you deal with it? And then the teacher got stuck. Because our educators, our teachers uh, back to our school guided us in the same way. Right? Or I E E Koko Gogo. That's how they taught us. But then now imagine that you you are now you are already in a globalized world and you can be placed in any part of the world. You can next you might be teaching at China. Then how would, would, would you first go on considering teaching Koko Gogo and then you teach article? Or is there some other ways of doing the same? And then the teacher got stuck. So that's how our teachers are. Our curriculum have placed the our curriculum has placed the matter, but then our manpower has uh, I've not been well trained on the same. So I think the the issue continues then. I was talking to former sec former foreign minister of Nepal. Uh huh. Says, Indeed. Uh, she's saying her time that time she was born in two thousand twenty. 
Okay. She say our English learning so bad. We write in W A P E R. Yeah. And then we write in bracket war tor. <laughs> yeah. We learning English in Nepal. Yeah, indeed. Sad. Yeah, I think you pointed the right thing here. Then, so yeah, my example also. You know, I think in a way backs it up, right? So our teachers, you know, like they are not teaching English as English, right? Our educators and then our our children, they are not speaking English as English. Yeah, right. So they are just, you know, like taking it as a burden. I see so many foreign going prospects, you know, uh, taking advice from me. And then they are saying, uh, so how can we improve our English? But then, you know, like they are not concerned about actually improving. They are just, you know, uh, concerned about they are only worried about meeting the requirement. Yes. So they're not taking it as passion. They are just, you know, like... Uh, Taking it as some uh, easy game, you know, like you in Nepalese education system, like you, you don't have to prepare well for examination. You have got the uh, good back of in the cheating forms and then the, you have got the friends out there. And then you, these kids, they expect the same thing to uh, continue in the adult life as well. Right. And that's the luxury they won't be having. Right. So. I think our education, I think sometimes, you know, like I ask myself, are we truly educating our children or not? Right. And then I sometimes think uh, Westerners are right to question our education system. Right. Because we have given them that option. Right. Why can't we produce the top notes education system? And then why English can't be taught as a language and then when you teach it as a language actual language then you need to be aware about all the dimensions related to it right your people are teaching english as just one normal subject right okay so for example if you go to the government colleges or even the private colleges these days english literature or is completely taught in nepali language so <laughs> if even the children are happy about that, they're not concerned about the foreign things. They, they they want to go abroad, but then they request the teachers to tell the things in Nepali language. This I also think, you know, and so many people thinking English is just go. <laughs> Goff, yeah. Ex exactly. Talk golf in Nepal. Right. Golf. <laughs> Right. Ah. English speakers yeah, or English BA damaged learners having this bad image that these are only Gohari people. Wow. Sitting Goh all the time. You go to class, lots of saying, and this is sad. Yeah, you're right on the money. So, usually the point is, uh, you know, like these MA, BA people, as you mentioned, you know, like we had to absorb so many teachers coming to, you know, demonstration classes. And then, you know, like they say they come to teach English or non-English subjects for that matter. But then they are also in English script on the subjects like science, mathematics, and then the likes. And they come to teach this, but then they forget the aspect of the language when they come. You know, like they cannot communicate completely in uh, English language, right? Okay, so they are in a way, you know, mixed. They are hybrid. They are half Nepali, half English, half Hindi, right? So they learn so many languages and then they do not know one language properly. So the teachers, they try to communicate to us, but then they have to, you know, grope for the words, think, they are groping and then losing their, you know, precious times at the moment, right? And then our kids, you know, like the, our kids, they are, I think, they are more professed or better than our teachers these days because they are exposed to some English movies and then they catch accent, they can speak in better accent than our teachers. And then our teachers are quite humiliated on that ground, right? So, you know, I remember like some teachers, you know, mispronouncing the words. For example, they say grammar. Grammar, you know, like, uh, it's just, you know, non, non-existent term. It's grammar, right? But then, like, as you mentioned, uh, grammar, 
our teachers have you know trained us to say grammar this nepali english right okay so communicative but then will you be judged well if you say grammar in an ielts test or pt test right so our teachers at least i think once you go to you know teach a language subject either it's nepali language chinese language russian language at least you should be knowing the delicacies of it you know like how many phonemes are there how many morphemes are there or like how the how, how a word is formed right and then does okay can we use a different degree of the word for the you know uh, to communicate you know some of the deepest emotions right so our teachers you know like are using the same word again and again mistake they are repeating mistakes sentence after sentence right so can you use synonyms can you use the highest degree of the term right so this aspect has been completely uh, subsided right it it has been kept at a at a backdrop okay so i think with this train you cannot expect you know uh, our learners to be as proficient as some of the foreign kids so that's my point sir and i was thinking no that student don't learn to make sentence aha uh -huh. for okay. example science science that is force push or pull is force <laughs> yeah in that same bullshit exactly like you see in nepali ramle bhat khancho is a complete sentence right and in english you have ram eats rice the positioning of these um, terms the these parts of speech is different from nepali uh, to english or from any language hindi nepali sanskrit in a way common languages right but then english being it has a different positioning system and as you mentioned like what was the example can i use it again what is for exactly so what is a flower living thing is a flower that's how the people are doing right but then like your english is already under the scrutiny then right so because you are forcefully trying to you know convert you are into the conversion process you are translating when you learn a language as just translating process then you never upgrade yourself I think well for Nepali to to English. Uh huh. Other subject also crucial. Yeah. No, not only English. People are thinking I am only reading English subject and I becoming complete. <laughs> yeah. Should learn to write English in science. Of course, indeed. New sentence while doing social studies. Uh huh. But if but everyone is forced. For example, population. What is population? Total number of people living in one area. Yeah. Okay, that is not bad. Make one sentence uh -huh. yourself without anybody's assistance. Uh -huh. One sentence, and that's not exactly. I think other subject also teachers should participating. Yeah, that's the you know I think that's the major issue right at the current phase. we have got boarding schools where you know like we say in a way they are prom promoting english language culture right but then you know like i think you know just by keeping a school's name boarding school english medium school it is not going to solve the problem right so i found children and teachers using non english language while dealing with the subject in english language For example, if you go through the curriculum, they are entirely scripted in English language. But then the teachers, for the sake of convenience or of themselves as well as the students, they are using non-English languages. Especially mathematics teacher, I remember you know, like how can you explain one concept in English language? That was the kind of response they would be giving you. our children we have to be communicative they say we have to be communicative the main thing is making our student understand the thing right but then you i think you have made your students too much understanding at the moment right as a result of which our students are not being accepted in the foreign countries what mathematics have we taught what science have we taught you you taught them in you know nepali language for the sake of a convenience right so i think the growth of a child is you know impacted in every phase of the life right so in the pre primary school okay the child has to be properly guided into the accent form right and then you come to the primary level so level wise our children have to be you know guided in a way but then do we have that 
sort of requirement or do we have that sort of infrastructure manpower to handle that situation or not that is a genuine question right sir so what happens is you know um you are dealt with a teacher in a primary section who might be well accented and then you come to the lower secondary and then the the teacher says accent is not important you have to be communicative and then they come to the secondary level where you are entirely taught in nepali language and then you come to the plus two from where english does not exist at all right and then the, that's a child that's child a child you know a child's brain functions in a different way right the child is you know such a phenomenon or a being who can be easily manipulated right so what does the child keep in mind the child thing the child things right the child things easiest is the best right and then uh, throughout the life they will be running after easy easiness convenience right as a result of which the goal that we are targeting is not met yeah i found myself you know teaching a non english subject once it had been like almost 10 years back at school and i you know one thing that i did wrong words trying to teach this english uh it it was sp subject health and then i tried to teach them in english and then you know the children they liked me and then they appreciated me but then for some time i had to remain in vacation and another teacher came and taught the same subject in nepali language and they liked that another teacher more you know they preferred that teacher because you know they found oh wow it can be done that way right it's in us right so i faced such issues many times but then i say you know like um you are not uh, making the things simpler right i think i i always carried one phenomenon in my head one you know in a way mantra we can say if you you know like want to make people improve you don't degrade yourself you actually try to uplift them right here the opposite thing is happening like for example our teachers have been told in many boarding schools where i went for my professionalism for my okay employment right and they told me so you you communicating in an accent our children come from newari background and then they come from different background they are saying uh, to mother they are saying mata 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 their uh, you know uh, the accent is like mother and then you are saying mother and then they may not understand so so please compromise yourself right uh, you know try to speak in um, in the way that our children understand wow that was a very new phenomenon presented to me wow how can i you know like there are 40 people in the class and how how do i actually know what kind of english is understood by everyone right so you know like that was a you know simply well rounded equation that had been kept to me this is a double barrel equation and i said uh, i think if i go on making people happy or if i try to please them on the ground of english speaking uh, i will sink one day so i said okay i've got a dictionary and then whatever the way um, a word is supposed to be pronounced i'll follow that right so in this way i i aligned with the dictionary uh, pronunciation platform rather than following the nep leads patterns of english i could not go on and saying a motor and then i cannot go and saying water and then you know like uh, future and then <laughs> you know, just nature just you you go on pronouncing konao they are saying to know they are saying konao and then you if you have to make the people understand in that way then that would be fragile that would be disastrous so i dropped and pleasing the people and i said okay we have got a thing called dictionary let's stick to it so i think that is what a teacher has to do or an educator or anybody who is uh, staying as a guide has to do you don't drop your standard you raise the standard of the person next to you one oh, friend my we flats five no uh huh tts us he saying thus thus <laughs> yeah thus uh huh yeah 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 of course if you go with thus into IELTS exam and then you will be thus and then sent back to your platforms right so it's so tricky what we have been taught and then what is the reality 
actually reality is a very slippery term right we do not know what is a real standard even the even you might have heard there are different accents in britain itself scottish accent irish accent and then you know like even they themselves are not quite sure about it right so uh, even american english is now in a way negating british english right some pronunciation patterns are not accepted at all so we are you know like staying in a country far away from these situations far away from the reality doubly triply reduced from the reality and then we are trying to be you know so superior we are saying this is standard english this that is standard english we are we you know like you might have about about the plato's cave you know like the people inside there right they have been kept in darkness and they are the ones who are trying to you know, like being kept inside a well you are a frog inside the well and you are trying to make a guess on what is the standard thing outside happening right so you are making a judgment staying in a country called nepal which is uh, in a way under developing under developed country right our people they feel themselves to be so educated right and at the end they are mercifully uh, debunked yeah that's what that happens here, you know english teaching easier now than before like 10 years ago we were seeing difficult or now okay i think this is a very deep question you know like um, with all the technologies in your hand you know like some students currently they say sir uh, i think you mispronounced a word my google lady says this and they're trying to you know like in a way quarrel all right so uh, if you say preparation sir it's preparation right if i say grammar it's a grammar right okay so why because their google translator or google speech system tells grammar right and then they think google is the best right they think this teacher does not know hence i keep the dictionary always as a verdict right so i can you know in a way challenge anyone even the people from english speaking country right <laughs> when you have one evidence with you yeah so yeah everybody having food and thinking exactly now the thing with uh, ai they can have you know better understanding you know like ai they think now they are so reliant on ais and then this google system um, systems you know like they are you know we're undervaluing nowadays you know talking about undervalue teachers are just uh, viewed as some sort of commodities in the current world laborers right cheap laborers right you know like uh, yeah yeah indeed so underrated profession these days are overrated as you say um, the cheapest income and then once you don't fit into anybody you become teacher right so you are already entering a class with you know some sort of preoccupation some sort of you know love sided view about a person named teacher and then that teacher comes and gives you so uh, under stuffed matter and then english soft sub standard english and then the content from the old age and then that teacher comes to the class bringing notes from google and your all your position further nose dives right you are already undermined by the students right and then you come to the class with uh, unprepared uh, way you are you are unprepared in a way since you are bringing others notes right you are using others notes like i you know we used to have some friends back to the schools or colleges who use the same note again and again and again and again so what are we doing actually right so what who has actually given the right to the people to call the teachers or the educators or the instructors at the cheap rated professionals i think so me down the line if an accusation is uh, thrown at you or you have been questioned or some a finger is pointed at you i think you are also involved into that part yes so you cannot blame you know like people saying oh yeah they say teacher is like that like that like that. i think you also in a way are contributed to that sort of perception about the teacher right we we still like how many teachers do you remember from a school day or college life if you have to you know just say five best teacher i think you will 
start grouping in your head low vibrations of course see we don't have to go far away see we are, our example you know example here itself is sufficient to it suffices to state the fact that the, the teachers you know they just acted as chief professionals back then but no that time i thinking like that no aha uh -huh. but now i i not okay Because these are for five, six period coming go. No, so guy no, what coming no? Oh goodness! Home children taking care. Uh huh. What time do you do? And then six, seven period every day same thing repeating in every class. These are the board no. Oh my goodness! In the end, school government should thinking no how we make the standard better. You talking? Uh huh. These are not thinking that. लाइक I think if you go to just take a round, you go to some of the schools in Kerman Valley, even plus two, especially like in plus two the science faculty. I think you'll find every student, almost every, let us say, uh, almost fifty percent, let us say, some of them are brilliant. That's up to one point. But then you see almost fifty percent, more than fifty percent students taking tutorial classes. Yeah, of course. Rupees one. One day, one one hour charge is yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's how the people are viewing this teaching profession. So, in the class, you hardly attend the class. That's one thing. Even if you attend, then you know you teach irrelevant matters. You don't teach at all, actually. You know, like as you say, there is no time to prepare to go to class. What do you teach, right? Yeah, <laughs> what teacher takes you know ten to twelve periods a day. You you mentioned about five or six. That is what we knew. Yeah, five six compulsory, right? And then you know. And then to be Kali. Uh huh. Copy it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. And then you know. Talking to. Uh huh. Who was teaching in one school? Uh huh. She was primary teacher. Right. One day you see talking to a student. Why are you not doing homework? You should do. Right. <laughs> okay. Next day, teacher saying, "Why not doing homework? Do do." Third, fourth day, being like this, repeat, repeat. Sorry, sorry. It's sorry, sorry, yeah. Why not doing homework? Working, yeah. Working, yeah. Working, no, five, six days, saying same thing, boring, boring, no. उटसुडी Like I mentioned previously, our children have been kept, uh, you know, given some ideas from the parents' side itself. You know, like they have been asked to view the profession of teacher as a very lowly paying and uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, no work and then uh, just can't do anything. That's why teaching. Oh yeah, the situation has been like that, and then there is no preparation at all. You know, some schools ask teachers to take the copies to home to check, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah at home they they want you to prepare at home so some some schools or colleges invite teachers two or three hours before the school running hours right like they have to arrive at 7 and then they have to leave at 6 right they they force them to do three or four hours of extra work right so yeah slavery indeed and then you go home tired and then how when do you open the book actually Right. You know, teacher, one day fifty minutes. Yeah. Improve. Go. Exactly. 
Why are you so many fans here? I am so shocked. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are people coming inside room and learning environment? What is environment? Uh-huh. Go out. Yeah. Child inside class and say what is environment? Show what is environment. Yeah, like, indeed. This teacher also bores me. Aha. What is population teaching? <laughs> right, 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 right. Indeed. You know, that's why, you know, like, you don't, you hardly remember any teacher from your school life. Because now, now, now you're looking back, you're becoming nostalgic and seeing the thing back. And then, oops, my teacher had to undergo so many conundrums back then. Right, you know, like you have family issues, right? You, you know, like once you, if you are married, then um, it's likely that you'll have some fight in the intervals of two or three days. That's a na- that's a matter of na- nature, right? Two two people, yeah, living together, um, it's uh, sure to be, it's bound to be some sort of quarrel some classes right and then they keep so many things on their head and come to the class and once you enter they tell you you are two minutes late sir now you are already burdened now you go inside the class and one child is making noise and then you're you're doomed right you don't manage your time like they say you know i see almost 99% of school you can take a visit they ask the teachers to make lesson plans wow such a nice thing they think they are doing great job by making the teachers to do the paperwork and then they are doing oh yeah 10 minutes for warming up 10 minutes for this 10 minutes for activities yeah 10 minutes for checking diary work. yeah right stupid and stupid see Every teachers know they are doing some hypocritical work out there. They know they are not going to follow that lesson plan at all. And you know, like these educators, they try to be over smart at times. Like our people in Nepali, uh, Nepali setting being over smart about the English speaking countries, right? So these educators, they think they have to observe the class and then they will see whether the teacher is executing or not. That is such a bullshit, right? See, like you, you are controlling someone. You are you know giving some impression to that person you know like we are observing you you are under the big brother big brother is watching you and then out of fear you come well prepared you don't sleep right for all night you prepare because you have to impress right next day you might be thrown out of the job right no security yeah no security at all and then you know they come that way and then these educators who are observing that teacher, they say, wow, so nice. But then what happens next in the class? The, the children is, okay, the children are, the children are already viewing their teacher as a hypocritical being. Because one day the teacher is delivering in such a way, and the next day, oop, gone entirely to the level of the grass. And then you, you, you talk about the respect for the teacher, right? You lost the respect there. Thanks to the educators, so-called educators, so-called, you know, the founders, directors, CEOs, the powerful people, big brothers. Thanks to them, all the teachers have become hypocritical. And why why would these children respect that teacher? Just give me one reason. Why to respect someone? Do you respect someone for just for a look? Right? Oh, so beautiful teacher. Or, oh, and so, wow, I like him. Yeah, I think... Almost 90% children in Nepal like a teacher for being handsome or beautiful, not for the teaching style or the methods, or not for their deliveries, right? You ask children, why why do you like that teacher? Uh, because, you know, like, he looks so good. Yeah, that's how things are happening here, right? Another thing I want to know, children using Messenger, uh-huh. no WhatsApp, Right. Uh huh. Email also nowadays or sentence. A sentence. Self coming sentence. Uh-huh. You write what in email and then what is it? Already. In yeah. Email. It's typed form. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. It's programmed by AI. Yeah. Like this student not better. Because 
It's just me. Yeah, you do, you do not do anything, you know, like if you, you just type a question at chat ZPT and it gives you so ready-made answer. The children do not know which side of the letter should the date and, uh, you know, pl address be placed. They do not know what is alliteration. And then, you know, like letters, letters, email, memos, all these business communication forms are easily given to you. You don't have to do anything, right? Teacher gives you an assignment and they are going to bring such a wonderful standardized content. And teacher is, wow, wow. Even I could not have written such answer. Then And then they're grading their student A, A plus, A star, right? And this student go to other foreign countries and they are forced to clean the rooms or floors and then wipe and then just be a toilet cleaner because you got A. And these students, they cry in these foreign countries. They remember their old days. The teachers, they said, wow, so nice teacher, handsome teacher. That handsomeness is now not paying them any reward. Yes, that teacher will explain to you in Nepali language is not doing you any goodness in the future. They're crying. I can literally hear them. They have been, you know, deprived of their fundamental right to education, right? These people are joking, you know, like these uh, educators, they are joking. They are choking the parents and joking the students, right? While the choking and joking goes hand in hand, this situation will appear. Like, how many of you think like, okay, we have almost, let us take it in the 100 and then say out of 100, how many... Of 100 Nepali students, uh, the professionals, uh, uh, future job prospects, do they get, you know, job at a magnificent level in the foreign countries? How many? One, two, three? How many names do you hear? Like, okay, Nepali is being in a higher post in the foreign countries, right? From there we know, we are not producing the people to reach to that level. I heard the, you know, the nurses and the doctors going from here. At first, won't be let to toss the equipment as well. They will be given the work at, at the cleaners, right? So, kind of work our sisters are holding at the hospitals now. Uneducated sisters, that is the kind of post you are going to get in the foreign countries in your initial years. So, you will be asked to, you will be, you know, asked to first meet some requirement out there. And then you will be slowly given some post. But then reaching the highest post, don't imagine. Indians, they have been, you hear Indians being at high level post. Who is the CEO of Google, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, but then tell me one famous country, uh, company or some, you know, uh, any business firms where Nepal is being in a foreign uh, place, it's the uh, institution, all right? So that's, because we, we never prepared. Our teachers, you know, like, go and ask these teachers who have been teaching in different colleges and schools. They never dream to become a teacher. They do not know. They are not passionate at all. In the mind, they are calculating, sir. Stock market. Oh, my God. Stock market. And then the land I purchased. In their head, there is land. There is stock market. And then you see, there were some colleges and we heard the news. You know, like, teachers are involving students in different things they are taking you know making students as some guinea pigs they think students are, are the sources of income tuitions wow you are not being students as a student you are being them as the commodities you are the prospects future prospects of my owning and they love the they love the naughtiest and then the worst student in the class because he or she possesses the higher higher amount so good students are in a way headaches for the teachers because good students always question you, right? So this is the system, like sir. What can we do? <laughs> and uh, also these days, many people say in Nepali language. Uh huh. Right. English, English only. Nobody talking Nepal. Yeah. In book also English, English. Uh -huh. Philosophy also English, English. Western philosophy. All right. Nepal language dying out. I school my teacher hitting me went. Uh huh. Yeah, you you'll be fine. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sad. But it's still also right now also. Uh huh. Yeah. Composer English, talking English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be penalized if you don't communicate in English. Yes. People saying the prison of Nepali language. Hehe. <laughs> Party latest. Very hypocritical. Yeah, too hypocritical indeed. Yeah, but then you you mention about the fact of being punished, and then what is our English now? Then shouldn't we have been the remarkable English speaker? Then what have we done? Wasn't that hypocritical? Then just you know charging money, fining. That was in a way disciplining system, son. You know, like we have the teachers in front of the teachers. You have to communicate in English language. That's what they say, and then. So many students, you know, they complain to me, sir. Those teachers, they are communicating in Nepali language. So teachers, teachers communicating in Nepali language, no problem. But you, being a student, you should bend knee. You should bend in front of us. You should kneel down, right? And do as we say. Be as hypocritical as we want you to be. That's what they want. Right, these teachers they have been uh, trained by the hypocritical teachers, and now they are training these new murgas to be as hypocritical as them. Right, so I don't blame students. You don't blame teachers. I don't blame students. Who is to be blamed then? So <laughs> no zazig at all. Right. So we have been the part of the same education system. Right. But then I think people are jumping. To the conclusion, without understanding the thing, they think one form of English is standard, another form is not a standard, right? If you can go to Britain, it's standard. If you go to America, it's standard. If you stay back in Nepal, not a standard, right? You think Nepal is better or English better? Language. Okay, now you know. I think I do not have you know in a way adequate exposure or experience to make a judgment on a particular language. Like, am I a proficient? Educator or a person uh, with a huge, with a proven uh, track record of Nepalese language, I'm not, and neither am I of English. So I think you know, comparing the language won't give us any benefit. But then going back to your previous question, Nepali language dying out. You see, English is taking over, right? You see, like Nepal had never been colonized, but seriously. Right? Had Nepal been not colonized, then why are we communicating in English language? Being back here in the same country, why are we not even speaking in Nepali language? Right? Yeah. Why haven't? Why have you been punished while you try to speak a Nepali word? Yeah. See. Right. So colonizers are present, sir. Just keep your eyes and ears open. They're all present everywhere there. Right. So yeah, Nepal language dying. I think. I don't know, right? But if Nepal language is dying, English language should have become the uh, you know major uh, stakeholder. But it is not even the case. Like, yeah. how can you say English language is you know becoming better in Nepal? I don't. I I totally disagree. English language is always the same. People are just you know trying to become superior or westernized or oh wow cultured and communicating English. That's just, that's just communicating, right? But are you communicating in a standard way? If you are, then oh yeah, we say all right, English is actually taking over, right? But then you are dropping Nepali. You are neither good at in Nepali or nor at English. So, yeah. Uh huh. In my plus two, he was teaching Nepali. Every teacher tried to say my subject, great subject. Uh huh. English teacher said. I remember that teacher saying he once went thing to tea professor of English. Uh huh. Reading how tea professor English he reading. He reading Shakespeare, Shakespeare all. Yeah. He saying look, Nasi Prasad Dev Kota writing one novel. Uh huh. And he explaining the novel to English professor to read everyone. Okay. English professor saying, "Look, I have never read any British <laughs> book. Therefore, Devkura is the biggest uh, writer. Like this, like this. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not good. Yeah. 
I know. I think we have to ask another question at the same time. Do these two gentlemen in question did they have you know uh, some well versed or some experienced form of readership based on these writers? Like, for how many have you? For how many years have you read William Shakespeare, for example, right? You read two or three books, you say Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, everyone knows that. You say that and you read one novel by Lakshmi Prasad Devkut and you go on comparing. So people spend, you know, like 50 or 60 years at a writer. Then you, I think, you asked me the question to compare Nepal language and English language. I, I hesitated with the fact that I'm into English language for around 15 years and into Nepal language for another 15 years. Is that sufficient? Because there are the people who have been doing English for almost centuries. Right? And they're still not satisfied with their own judgment of English language. Then who are we to make a judgment? I think so these two gentlemen... If they try to compare two literary greats, William Shakespeare and uh, Lord Sambhasa Devkota, I think I say they are attempting to, you know, just uh, withhold, withheld some drops of water into an ocean. Other languages also, we, Nepali or English, that's why we learn so much. But other languages also, Udu, yeah. many writers. Uh-huh. Many writers in Italy, many writers. Right. Uh-huh. What, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Haiku, and Japan, everybody trying to write Haiku pictures. No? Haiku comes. Yes. Great, great. Yeah. Doesn't mean English, Nepali, or? Yeah, exactly. Like, they call me the, uh, you know, the teacher of literature. I, I, I highly doubt myself. What do I know of literature? Maybe just 0.5% into the entirety of literature, right? As you mentioned, right? I know a little bit of Nepalese literature and English literature, maybe some Russian literature, Vladimir Nabokov, or, you know, like James Joyce. You, you, you just name some writers, you know that much, right? But so many great books, not. Exactly. Yeah. But then they are coming here and then they are giving a lecture as if they are so well versed in that matter. So same is the case with our education system, right? For example, no, in this school, yeah. I was watching lecture by Uso. Uso, maybe someone wrote mm-hmm. a lecture and he was talking about the word fuck. Yeah. And he said fuck is also a beautiful word. Can be used in so many different ways. Right. This is good. Yeah, of course. You. <laughs> you are so fucking disgusting. Uh huh. We use in so many different ways. And he pointed out look, English has four words. It can be used in so many different ways, which is so. Right. There are also Nepali words, which can, which is very unique, uh-huh. cool, nice. For example, my friend saying, saying in English, I hate you. Uh huh. No emotion. In Nepal, say, Oh, wow. So, so professed. Deep. Uh, uh-huh. No. Right. Right, right. This word, Fana. Uh-huh. There was a movie also. Oh, yeah, Fana, yes. I try to find what is Fana meaning, and then I learn it. Uh-huh. Fana means to be destroyed in love. Wow. Wow, how good word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. In a way, right, right, true, true, true. You can say English better, Nepali better, I English speaking, I no being. Right, right, right. Exactly. That's stupidity. That's entirely stupidity. And then, you know, like, but then, like I mentioned, you have been programmed to believe. When you say that F word, then you are superior. Wow, that's this, right? But then other languages, as you mentioned rightfully, other languages have got so beautiful words, right? So I think that gives us the scope of preserving Nepal language, as you mentioned, right? Sanskrit words, wow, such delicate Sanskrit words are there, right? Which can never, you know, reach the level, uh, other languages can never surpass it. 
right? But then now, as you see, I think you expressed your fear when you say, which language will exist in Nepal 15 years from now? What will all the people be speaking? Right? I think the uh, crons or the core, the heart of that question lies with the fact that whether the people are being serious about, you know, these languages. Are they only concerned about language or are they actually appreciating languages? That's the point, I think, right? So, once you are programmed, these are people, you know, like they have been programmed, they know they have been programmed, but still they are ready to move on with that. Yes, they know it's not right. You know, like why 10,000 people leaving Nepal every day? Right. I think we should try to try to bridge gap. Indeed. So one language is better, all other is better. Of course. Right. You know, like the wives in Nepal now, they are imitating the Western styles and then they're preferring to take cigarettes and then they're preferring to take wine. I'm not telling just uh, wives in general, but then, you know, like, see, our youth are so professed or so enthused into this Westernized living. They are forcefully entering that part into our culture, right? But then they are so many beauties in your culture which are actually getting in the shadow, right? They have been shadowed, they have been foreshadowed by your interplay of the westernized ideology, right? Isms are eating, right? Our cultures, right? Like just yesterday I had been seeing that there was some sort of transfusion of Christianity in the street they were distributing the books and then that like see they're distributing english language they have already distributed english language into a red now they're distributing christianity slowly they will be distributing every other aspects right you should and i think you know what is the alcohol consumption rate in Kathmandu at the moment back then you know compare it with uh, the time of 20 years back right 20 years and from now look Become civilized people are compulsory drinking alcohol, right? Once you drink, oh yeah, you should drink beer and then branded, oh wow, red label, white label, this and that, right? And you should communicate in English, right? Then you are superior and you should be Christian now. Wow, Christian, true, true God, right? And this kind of thing, people have been programmed, right? So that's it, sir. Don't think one language is good, one language is bad, one accent good, another Exactly, true enough. How can you judge something, right? To become like, I know, sometimes people show attitude and I tell them, wow, showing attitude is good, but then you should show attitude about something that you are best at, right? Suppose you have good, fantastic English, wow, so attitude. If you are so beautiful, all right, so attitude about your beauty, fine. But then you are... Not in any label, but then you are saying, oh yeah, just uh, that kind of attitude does not work. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Less of the same. Less of the same. So thank you. So thanks for having me. It was a nice time talking to you. Have a nice time. <laughs>